I don't think most people appreciate how bad salt is for them. And I don't think people mostly like being told that salt's bad for them because you know, we come from a society where it's normal to have salt on the table, it's normal to add salt to, to food, and most people have a palate that is adjusted uh, to, to a high salt intake. The problem with salt is the sodium in salt. So salt is made up of sodium and chloride, and what sodium does is progressively pushes up your blood pressure throughout your life, and that greatly increases your risk of getting strokes, heart attacks, and kidney disease. We did a really big study because we wanted to try and prove once and for all what the benefits of reducing the amount of salt you eat might be. And the way we did it is we got 21,000 people over five years and we gave half of them just regular salt as usual and the other half we gave what's called a salt substitute. And a salt substitute is a, a product which takes some of the sodium chloride out and replaces it with potassium chloride. And the benefit of that is that one, you're eating less sodium, so your blood pressure doesn't go up as much, but you're also eating more potassium. And potassium uh, is the stuff that's in fruits and vegetables. Uh, it's good for you, and it actually also lowers your blood pressure a bit. We did it in China, not because we thought it would only work in China, but because it was a good place to do the experiment. If you want to test whether changing the amount of salt people eat actually affects their health, you've actually got to be able to change the amount of salt they eat. And in Australia, um, salt comes in hundreds and hundreds of different packaged foods, and it's just not feasible to do this sort of study. In rural China, where we did the project, uh, almost all of the salt that people eat is salt that they add at home when they're cooking. So it's very easy for us just to go and say, look, instead of using that salt, use this salt. People are often surprised in Australia to hear that the, the main source of salt in the diet is actually bread. And that's not because bread's super salty, but it's because people tend to eat quite a bit of bread. Other sources of salt people don't expect are breakfast cereals. Um, there are more obvious ones like uh, cheeses uh, that, that, that people and processed meats. If you could drop your salt intake from 10 grams a day to 5 grams a day and you could sustain that, which I have to say is incredibly unlikely because it's a really difficult thing to do, um, you would hugely decrease your future risks of having a stroke, a heart attack or kidney disease. It would lower your blood pressure by more um, than taking blood pressure lowering drugs and it would be a really valuable thing for you to do for your health. If you eat too much salt today, tomorrow, for the next week, you're not going to experience any acute risk of suddenly dying or suddenly having a stroke or a heart attack. The problem with salt is that the effects accumulate over months and years and when you get into middle and older age you have greatly increased risks uh, of the most common causes of death in Australia. And the reason why it's so important is that it affects almost everyone because everyone eats more salt than they need and they do it every day and they do it for years. And so it's a little bit of increased risk in everyone in pretty much the world that adds up to literally millions of people having strokes, heart attacks and dying prematurely each year because of excess salt consumption. <laughs> We did the study because we thought that reducing salt intake would decrease the risks of stroke, heart attack, premature death, and we showed all of those things very convincingly.